everybody. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to tie up some loose ends. Now, what does that mean? Well, for every artist, it means something different. For, for me, it's usually painting the sides of paintings. Perhaps I'm putting a signature on one or doing a little color correction. And today I'm gonna to take you on that journey and I'm gonna show you what it takes for me to make a, a painting polished. How I bring it to that last, you know, before I actually present it to the world, whether it's to another gallery or here in my gallery and it hangs on the wall, it's gonna take you to that place. So thanks so much for joining me today. And if you are my subscribers, thank you so much. If you're not, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe right there and let's go ahead and go on that journey and see what a tying up loose ends and a polished piece really is for me hey guys i am going to try something today now i know that a lot of folks are doing these like youtube shorts i don't really know what that means but i also know this i I have lots of little things that I could talk about that don't take very long to talk about. And one of them is just me tying up loose ends. And when I say that, I, I paint on canvases that are oftentimes like, you know, two inches or an inch and a half wide. And I may have like a piece like this and I'll be like, oh, you know, it's done. And it's been like, hang on, let me see if I can hold it up for you. It's been drying in a window and it's, you know, it's been, you know, Oh, it's great. It's fab, right? But it's not done because I have all these edges that need to be painted. So I have that is true with several of my paintings. I also have paintings that are hanging on the wall that aren't even signed. So today's video is just going to be a little bit about tying up loose ends. And Lord knows I got, I got ends <laughs> hanging all over the place. So I'm just going to show you how sometimes I just have to paint the sides of paintings or uh, sign a few paintings or return emails or I don't know, but I'm just going to show you a little bit about painting the sides of paintings. So there you go. So stay tuned, watch, sit back. If you are my subscribers, thank you so much for being there. If you're not, you know, go ahead and consider subscribing. And you know, this isn't gonna be a long video. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna be, you know, painting the sides of paintings. And I'm gonna show you how many of them I actually have laying around that need to be attended to. So that's what we're gonna see. I'm gonna probably time lapse it so you're not gonna bore you. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here. And let's go ahead and tie up some loose ends. show you is that sometimes the continuation of the sides of a painting for me is just whatever like this was the top portion so I had to paint this to look kind of like trees right and so here you kind of go along the side of the painting and I had to kind of you know I'm not going to do it with as much detail as I do on the front of the painting but I do have to continue the the concept of what is directly in front and so Obviously, I had to go do the same thing on this side. And I didn't have any paint. I mean, it was not done. So <clears throat> there's the bottom of the canvas. So now I have four wet sides of the canvas and I can't actually just lean it up because then the bottom will get all gooky and stuff and things will stick to it and it just won't be right. So now what do I do? I'm holding wet painting, I can't set it down. So I gotta hang it on the wall. <laughs> Actually, I'm not gonna hang it on the wall because if it, if it just was a straight canvas, I would just set it on the wall. But because this has got this cross beam in the middle, I, it will just hang like, it would hang all crooked. So I'm gonna do the next best thing. Even though the bottom is wet, I'm going to set it right here. And, We'll let it 
dry here. So I'm going to very carefully place this painting right here and let it dry. So now on to the next painting. That's not actually complete because I have painting, you know, to do on the sides. sides kind of are painted. You can see that I have, uh, maybe you can, I hope, hopefully you can. You can see that there is the snowflakes. Um, yeah, they could be a little bit better. There's not a single stinking snowflake on the, on the bottom of this. So I'm just going to paint a few snowflakes. It's just, it's just the, I don't know, finishing touches of the piece. And so I'm just going to hit this a little bit. Um, I will see it's it's actually the snowflakes look good, pretty good. I don't know if you can see, but there is the snowflakes on this side of it uh, of the canvas, but there is no snowflakes on the bottom and there actually can be a few more over here. Huh? There's some of my fingerprints that are on this, which is, you know what? That's kind of cool, right? All right. So I'm actually gonna have to squirt out some paint because I've been using like leftovers from other pieces. And I know I've got, even though this little, um, this little uh, portrait that I did of this dog is complete, I will have to get to that one too. So stay, stay tuned. <laughs> the top of the canvas really already had its snowflakes on it. It was really the bottom and the lower parts of the sides. So there it is. This painting is drying upside down along with this one that's drying over here. And then I have a problem. See this guy, he's, he's wanting attention. So he'll try to grab me off of whatever I'm doing just to pull me, <laughs> pull me off. But, uh, yeah, I just gave my hair cut uh, and he, uh, and you can see it's all over my, let's see if I can hold this for you. See, it's all over my legs, my pants, all that. Ow, stop singing. So Singer is being a bad, he's being a, he's being a mess. <laughs> Gotta love him. Okay, so back to the sides here. I, this painting you saw was one of the most recent YouTube videos, but you can see there's not a lot of detail. There's not a lot of paint. I got a lot of side work to do. There's nothing on the bottom. And it's not like I just get to do a color. I gotta kind of do leaves and everything else. Keep in mind, I also have to work against the fact that my dog is jumping all over me. So, Singer, you gotta stay down. He's six months old today. So, when you've got a playful pup and work to do, yeah, you have to compromise and do a little of both, right? So, okay, so let's go ahead and time lapse this. necessarily want to frame their pieces and that's one of the reasons why I paint on the thicker um, or wider or deeper canvases. Now a lot of artists either leave this white or they paint it black or some solid color but I, I had started a long time ago to always paint whatever or continue whatever the picture was along the edges and it's kind of, you know, made it a little bit more unique and it's funny now I'm starting to see more and more people doing exactly the same thing. Well, but you, you gotta remember that you, <laughs> you have to go back and do this. And so this particular piece is gonna have to end up in North Carolina somehow. Either somebody's coming to get it or it's going to be shipped. And so I couldn't send it out, you know, without the sides painted. So even though the front of it is probably dry, uh, 
you know, it really wasn't completed. So another thing is I still haven't signed this piece and I'm probably gonna do a little color glazing on it. So there you have it. Here's another loose end to tie up. And as I mentioned color glazing, if I think that this is too intense for this piece, I wanna soften it up a little bit. I'm gonna use a product called Galkid and I mix just a little bit of white and king's blue and I'm actually gonna paint over this. Now, this may look a little bit weird at first, but I'm just softening up. Now, you have to make sure everything's, now, and it's not really good and dry. I told you, you gotta make sure it's good and dry, and it could be because I just painted along the edges, and so everything else seems pretty dry. I don't know why that did that, but I'm going to soften that up a little bit. That's interesting. I think that's really what is because I just painted the sides. Yeah. So I'm just kind of softening up the background a little tiny bit. And it's just a form of color correction. And I don't necessarily want it on the dog. So I'm just going in there and just softening it up a little bit. I don't want it quite as intense as it is. And I know that there are some wet edges because I just, just painted that area. I'm just kind of pushing that off a little bit. And when it dries, it will dry with a just a little bit of a haze to it. And I may actually do some, I'm doing the things that I always tell my students not to do. Do not use your fingers. Um, but I don't know any artists that don't actually do that. Um, and it can also be for, like, you know, it looks pretty intense when I, I throw it down at first, but it, I move it around and it, it just fades everything off a little bit. See, yeah, there's some there's some wet paint here. And that was because I just painted the edges and just ran the edges over, see? But um, I'm just kind of softening that up a little bit. And it does make it, it just pushes that background into the background a little bit more. And that's really what I was trying to do here. I didn't want it to be quite as intense. So it brings more attention to the dog itself and less to the background. And so there's a little color correction, a little phasing and hazing out a little bit here. This is interesting to me. I really thought this was completely dry. And I, I, I honestly think it's just because it was, yeah, it's the top moving over the top. That's fine. Okay, so there's a little color correction. And I may just put a little bit of that also in this background section being careful not to get it on the dog because I want the dog to stand out. I want the dog to basically pop in this piece. So I'm just toning down. I say toning down. In a sense, I kind of am because the color I'm using is a really light blue-gray to, to phase it out a little bit. Now, here I'm doing all this, and I'm not going to go over the edge because I know the edges. We know that the edges are wet and we're not going there. Now there's sometimes I need to do some color correction on the dog and really I'm not feeling that I need to but oftentimes I may have to um, you know deepen the shadow a little bit or or whatever so that is what I'm doing here is just fading out the background and this will dry um, you know, it'll be clear when it dries. It's not going to be this quite this opaque, but okay. So we know that this is a background, a fall background, and all that. But we don't have to see every stinking detail, and we're really bringing the color down a little bit by toning it or putting this gray into it and I'm digging it much better. Just, it was just a little too intense and I didn't want it to be quite as intense as it was. I'm gonna put a little bit on that too. Again, try not to use your fingers quite so much like I am, but and I'm gonna put a little bit down here. You know, we still have that fall looking background, but it just fades it off just a little bit. And I, I, I do think it looks 
bit better, makes this Jacoby pop a little bit more. And I may actually put a little bit of dark values in here too. So let's see where we go. It's very subtle these changes you can see them going on but then you know you can still see the detail right I'm gonna go ahead and dull that down a little tiny bit so that this part is rolled down a little bit more so it's not quite as white super super subtle but you know here's just to, just for demonstration purposes you see I'm putting a lot more on there but then I can sensation that you know his is rolled a little bit more the lights coming down hitting the top here but it's a little bit more shadowed okay. hit a, little bit, a couple couple other darker values in here into the leaves because some of the leaves wouldn't be quite as bright see what I'm saying just makes it a little bit more dimensional color glazing I do it not all the time Sometimes when I feel like I need a little correction, and that is that's pretty much it. I'm gonna put a little bit in here. Okay, so there we got it. That was some glazing, and I may see if another one of my pieces needs some color correction. Tying up loose ends. I'm using the dark, the dark um, mixture of the uh, ultramarine blue, umber, and galkid. And you can see I'm just kind of hitting a little bit in here. And I'm just, just, it's just, it's just setting it back a little bit, darkening. Got 
layers, right? after all this this is as magnificent as this buck is I wanted it to be as much about Lofko's work I don't know I know it sounds strange but oopsie this is just setting up here folks it's not really well. okay I really don't have to get up in here too 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 much now when this dries the galkid will have a kind of a it won't be matte looking be kind of lazy. So this means that I will have to return to this piece at some point and varnish it to make it have a more even finish. Uh, I varnish most of my pieces. I use um, Gamsol. I mean Gambar, not Gamsol. Um, and uh, depending on the gallery that they're heading to, if I'm selling it out of my own gallery, I go with high gloss, because that's what I like. But if I'm going with one of my other galleries that carries my work, um, some of them prefer a more satin or matte finish. So I have, I have all this product. I happen to like. Areas that I think need a little darkening. So just kind of enhancing this area a little bit more. But I don't want to go into the light areas because I'm okay with the way they look. I still want to go in the direction really that the hair's growing. I'm not going to. That looks see it just has a more intensified look, if you will. A little more intense. I'm going to go down here in the grass, darken some of the shadow here a little bit. I don't like this intense emerald green grass. I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. I'm going to tone that down just a tad. Oh yeah, I'm already liking that better. I didn't like that grass. It must have been something that I saw in the reference and just thought I'd include it, but quite honestly, I like it better like this. So if I'm creating a little bit of a shadow underneath the deer, you can see it just looks a little bit more intense when it goes down, but then you know, I'm just kind of blend it up.
I just have this set on top of this piece because it's not like a piece. <laughs> and again, here's another piece that has not been signed. So we'll go ahead and take care of that one now. I'm using a Rosemary Shiraz Rigger to do my signature. It's a number four. And I usually have to lean up on something. Uh, you know, and I get asked this quite a bit, like, how do you, um, you know, do you have a place that you like signing your pieces? Is there, you know what? I sign it wherever I think I, it needs to go. That's an adequate answer, I don't know. And I, you know, some people have really fancy signatures that make, or they make them very simple. Basically, I sign a piece like I sign my name on a check. <laughs> Now, some people like to date their pieces, and if I'm doing commission work, um, I almost always date it. I say that, but not always. There, boom. Signature. I don't always date them, um, but I oftentimes do, or I at least put the date on the back of it someplace. So, you know, for posterity's sake, I guess. Here we go. All signed. Tied up another loose end. So as you can see, sometimes what tying up loose ends is what actually makes a painting look more finished. And so between glazing and doing the sides of a painting and even doing the signature actually takes it all the way home. So yeah, loose ends. We've tied them up today, and I hope you appreciated what, what actually occurred. And in, in my mind today, I thought this was going to be a, a short YouTube video, but in actuality, it turns out to be probably 30 or 40 minutes, and it's because I have a lot of loose ends. I also did a lot of teaching today. I had probably mm, three students today, and it's... Uh, you know what? It's it's a quarter to seven in the evening on Wednesday afternoon. And yeah, it's been a full day, but it's been a great day. And I hope you enjoyed your day to do, today too. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions about what I covered today, you know, maybe you want to know a little bit about the, um, the mediums I was using or I don't know, whatever leave it in the comments section and I'll get to you. And I thank you so much for joining me today. And if you are my subscribers, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And if you're not, go ahead and, and join and be a subscriber, ring the bell. You'll know when the next video comes out. And thank you so much for joining me today. Um, yeah, this has been a, a been a full day and I hope you got a little something out of today's video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And until next time from Kingsport, Tennessee, I'll see you. Bye.